going to prove, here and now, that Sunday laws are coming. If you have ever been told that they will never come, or doubted in the validity of this prophecy yourself, then I encourage you to take a seat and watch this entire video as this alarming process unfolds before your very eyes. And for those of you who don't know what Sunday laws are, keep watching. Charles C. Camacy, an associate professor of theological and social ethics at Fordham University, which is New York's only Jesuit university, published this article on April 15, 2019, entitled, Fixing Climate Change Will Require a Culture Change. He states that our climate problems do not circle around the political opposition to bills like the Green New Deal introduced by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC for short. Rather, he says it is the personal opposition to climate change that even the leaders who are trying to wake us up don't even behave themselves as if we are in a climate emergency. His belief is that this is all because of our culture and that our culture must first change. While the grand majority of the leaders of the climate movement fail to understand this, Charles says that there is indeed a leader who does. Pope Francis. He says that rather than trying to at first get radical legislation passed, we should take the Pope's route, that climate activists should focus all their efforts on empowering institutions and practices that are capable of causing what Pope Francis calls ecological conversion. Bible students of prophecy have been arguing this for literally years that the leader of the climate change movement is none other than Pope Francis himself, who wants an ecological conversion within the heart of every single member of society. What does this mean? On April 26, 2019, Charles gives us an answer in another article entitled Pope Francis Laudato Si versus the Green New Deal. He says such a conversion must be both individual and communal. We must take a less-is-more, anti-consumerism approach to life that will lead us to transcend unhealthy anxieties caused by being trapped in a consumer society. We must also celebrate rest, especially from buying and selling, by returning to a focus on keeping the Sabbath. Charles C. Camacy just said that as individuals and as communities, we must return to resting on and keeping Sunday holy. We must first do this culturally, without laws. Then after the culture changes by regulation of buying and selling on Sundays. Now, laws have punishments for breaking them. And what do you think will be the punishment for breaking the cultural and traditional norms enforced by law? Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 to 17 says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. You will lose your ability to buy and sell entirely should you choose to break this law. 
Anytime you hear this phrase, ecological conversion, you need to associate it with Sunday laws. These Sunday Sabbath laws are in fact the mark of the beast. In Laudato Si, Pope Francis says climate change encyclical, he says Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationships with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Laudato Si, paragraph 237. What the Pope calls the Jewish Sabbath is the biblical Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. The day which Jesus resurrects is Sunday, the first day of the week. Mark chapter 16, verse 9. Now when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Charles Camacy is not making this approach to climate change up. This is a real and decided approach towards solving climate change. Emmanuel Agius, in December of 2015, wrote something similar when discussing the Pope's climate encyclical. In his article entitled Our Common Home, he writes how the encyclical sets the moral framework for COP21, which was the United Nations Climate Change Conference where 195 countries signed the Paris Climate Agreement. After discussing how the Pope desires industrial nations to perform, and the interaction needed at the local, national, and global levels to find a sustainable and effective solution, he says ecological conversion also means dealing with time differently, both as an individual and as a society. We need to rediscover the rhythm of time, the alternation between work and rest with Sunday as the commonly shared weekly day of rest. That's not all. The National Justice and Peace Network, a Catholic network working to bring the good news of Christ's love and peace to the people who are poor, oppressed, and excluded, took the theme in their annual conference in 2017, A Sabbath for the Earth and the Poor, The Challenge of Pope Francis. Independent Catholic News says, in order to be liberated from this commodification, consumerism, and utilitarianism, we need the Sabbath. Church Poverty on Action, a national ecumenical Christian social justice charity and a partner in the conference with the National Justice and Peace Network, published in their blog on June 16th, 2017, that the conference title draws on a powerful strand of Laudato Si, where Francis explores the importance of the Sabbath and the Eucharist in helping us to build and deepen our relationships with the world and other people. This is not all happening by chance. This is prophecy being fulfilled. Charles Camacy states that religious institutions must work to help people cultivate a spiritual foundation that makes ecological conversion possible. He encourages anyone to do all they can to support religious institutions in this work. The Sunday Sabbath is being advocated on both religious and secular grounds. Belfast Telegraph published a letter on July 27, 2015, two months after the Pope's encyclical, entitled, Rest on Sunday Helps Us All, Not Just Christians. It states that not only Christians are opposed to the relaxation of Sunday trading laws, but also the General Secretary of the TransUnion Congress, the Union of Shop, Distributive, and Allied Workers, as well as small shopkeepers. The letter finishes by pointing out that we all need a break from consumerism.
And the French Revolution in Communist Russia tried to alter the seven-day weekly cycle, but had to revert back to it, with one rest day included. On November 15th, 2018, an article appeared by Ethan Blake entitled, The Secular Case for the Biblical Sabbath. He believes that Shabbat can facilitate profound spiritual growth for people of all faiths and secularities. A few organizations like the Sabbath Manifesto, National Day of Unplugging, and Shemitah Project have begun to provide some resources for how to slow down and realize we have enough when we seek less rather than more. Ethan Blake himself is Jewish, which means he keeps the biblical Sabbath. However, in this article, he states that disconnecting the Sabbath from religion, like these organizations do, might cause it to lose some sacredness, but he believes that the potential benefits are too great not to do so. Mr. Camasey states that when Christians instill these virtues, they will help to lower carbon emissions, which interestingly enough is precisely like the idea that Satish Kumar suggested. The instillment of these virtues, Charles says, is the only real hope, so that one day we will accept something like the Green New Deal. The year 2030 is given before we reach the irreversible or catastrophic climate change. Charles suggests culture can change in 10 years or faster. And then we will have to pass radical legislation. He says in 2004, GOP operatives put anti-same-sex marriage policies on the ballots. By 2014, American culture had transformed so dramatically on gay and lesbian marriage that pushing legislation barring it would have been political suicide. Pope Francis continues to lead the Sunday Sabbath movement on religious and interfaith grounds, as well as secular and scientific grounds. As a matter of fact, from March 7th to the 9th of this year, 2019, an international conference was held called Religious and Sustainable Development Goals, Listening to the Cry of the Earth and the Poor. Pope Francis called for an ecological conversion during the conference, which, according to Juno Estevez, brought together religious leaders from all major faith backgrounds, as well as advocates and experts in the fields of development, the environment, and healthcare. Now, to address a point of contention that many have, and that is that blue laws, or laws that restrict business activities on Sundays, continue to disappear in the United States, from Pennsylvania, to West Virginia, to Texas, and North Dakota. But do not be deceived. Sunday laws are indeed coming. Allow me to explain. If we bring our attention to the other side of the planet, to Poland, a country that is about the size of New Mexico, we see that in 2017 an article was published entitled Poland to Phase Out Sunday Shopping by 2020. This article appeared in the Catholic Herald, and it says, Initially proposed by trade unions, the idea received the support of the ruling conservative law and justice party who want to allow workers to spend more time with their families. So keep stored in the back of your mind that this bill, which became law, was initially proposed by trade unions. But did you notice whom the idea received the support of? The conservative law and justice party. Their reasoning, people needed to be allowed to spend more time with their families. But before this, we need to go back to something that took place in Poland, which will be the key to help explain what's soon going to take place in America. On June 29, 2016, an article entitled Poland's Conservative Revolution, A Dilemma for the Baltic States was published. It states that the PIS, or the Law and Justice Party in Poland, returned to power and launched a series of highly controversial institutional and legal reforms. The conservative revolution was in full swing. America is undergoing a conservative revolution, especially with President Donald J. Trump, who is governing pretty conservatively. The Democratic Party in the United States is growing smaller as the conservative movement continues to grow. There are political commentators such as Ben Shapiro, who has the largest conservative podcast in the nation. But what is interesting, besides this fact, is that Poland and America have a similar enemy. 
Crisis Magazine's Ines Murzaku published on December 7, 2017, an article entitled, Poland Keeps the Lord's Day Holy. Ines stated that Poles know communism and communist persecution firsthand. They do not want to return to what they have already suffered, restless and irreverent Sundays of the communist past. She is equating communism to breaking the Sunday Sabbath. She says communists wanted to annihilate God by annihilating Sabbath, annihilate Christianity by annihilating the day of the Lord. Now, while these two are not exactly the same, communism, which the Poles fought against, and socialism, which America is now fighting against, have similarities. As a matter of fact, communism is regarded as a more extreme form of socialism. These facts are important to consider. Blue laws might be disappearing in America, but not for long, and not without a fight. The reasoning for bringing back blue laws will sound familiar. The article, Bring Back Blue Laws, published by Dominic Buch on April 2nd of this year, says that removing blue laws hurts the young, the impoverished, single mothers, and all those who struggle. The legal protection of Sunday rest helps the individual worker and preserves the family from the arms race that is our consumer society. He states that if capitalists wish to resist the rise of socialism in America, they cannot allow the libertarian impulse to go unresisted. If it is unresisted, it will give rise to Marxism, which is communism. He states that removing God from being the chief protector of man's freedoms will leave the void to be filled by false luminaries like Karl Marx and AOC. Dominic is saying exactly what Ines argued. That if Americans wish to resist socialism and communism, we need to bring back the legal protection of Sunday. This is exactly why I said to take a brief look at Poland. Amazingly enough, America itself is being told to follow in the footsteps of Poland. Nicholas Smith of the National Catholic Register published the article, Taking Sunday Seriously, Poland Leads the Way, on April 2, 2018. In it, he states, the European nation's new law sharply restricting Sunday shopping provides an opportunity to take a closer look at American habits. As it turns out, there are documented drawbacks to ending blue laws. A 2008 study found that repealing Sunday closing laws led to a decrease in church attendance and tithing, along with a significant rise in alcohol and drug use among the religious population. Isaiah chapter 8, verses 19 to 20. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God? For the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Does anybody remember Arizona State Senator Sylvia Allen? Sean Shuster for a Gospel Herald on March 31st, 2015, in his article, Mormon Arizona Senator Sylvia Allen suggests mandatory church attendance for corrupt souls, also states that the moral code for America was declining unquestionably. Sylvia stated, it is the soul that is corrupt. Probably we should be debating a bill requiring every American to attend a church of their time on Sunday to see if we can get back to having a moral rebirth. Now yes, I understand that Sylvia Allen herself stated that this was a flippant comment. I am also aware that she stated that this would never happen. However, I entirely disagree with the latter, as is evident by the movements of the Pope and his cohorts. 
The reaction of the American people helps to gauge where the minds and hearts of Americans are upon this issue. Another way that we can gain a general idea on how Americans view what they call the Sabbath, meaning whatever they, they choose to call Sabbath, is by looking at polls. Kelsey Dallas published an article on April 27, 2016 entitled, New Poll Finds Americans Less Likely to Keep the Sabbath Than in 1978, But Majority Still Say It's Important to Society. Their article says, 50% of U.S. adults say the Sabbath has a personal spiritual meaning for them. However, only 11% disagree with that proposition. Millennials are less likely than any other generation to say the Sabbath is important or engage in religious activities on that day. 73% of adults say they take rest and relaxation on the Sabbath, which is 10% more than in 1978. 30% of people go shopping. 27% of U.S. adults attended church on what should have been their Sabbath. 11% spent time in religious meditation, 21% of evangelicals and 12% of mainline Protestants and Catholics said resting on the Sabbath is essential to what being Christian means to them. However, 58% of the silent generation and 56% of baby boomers say the day has religious or spiritual meaning compared to 41% of millennials. If anybody wants the actual study, the link, as well as all the links to these articles, will be in the comments. So we can essentially see that while the Sabbath is more important among the older generations than the younger generations, and that church attendance is generally low, the majority of Americans believe the Sabbath is important to society. Rest assured, the Pope and his cohorts will take advantage of every situation he can to get his Sunday Sabbath enforced. Back in the Nicholas Smith article about taking Sunday seriously, he states that in the 2008 study previously mentioned, that it found little evidence that declines in religious attendance preceded the repeal of the Blue Laws. Instead, opening up Sunday to secular pursuits creates direct competition with religious obligations. Meaning it was not that religious attendance was low because of the Blue Laws were being repealed. Rather, it was opening up Sunday to secular pursuits that leads to a decrease in religious attendance and less family time. So then, what would bring people back into the churches and spend more time with their families? Closing up businesses. Zach Johnson of CEO World Magazine wrote an article entitled A Modest Proposal for a Day of Rest, published on January 29, 2018. He points to many senior corporate executives and celebrities that keep a day of rest. Former Treasury Secretary Jack Lew, who also served as Chief of Staff for President Barack Obama, and former Senator Joseph Lieberman, Ivanka Trump, Jared Kushner, Randy Zuckerberg, who is a former Director of Market Development and Spokesperson for Facebook, sister to Mark Zuckerberg, and Dr. Menahem David Smajdat, a well-known author economist and religious scholar. Lieberman states, regardless of one's religion, or frankly whether one considers oneself religious, there's a powerful message and purpose to the Sabbath. The gift of rest is desperately needed in our world today. Randy does a digital Shabbat. Dr. Shmaja believes that Shabbat can also positively impact the world. He believes that with his 35 years of experience and all his work, he has been able to develop a system that will help us in the 21st century with our spiritual and material problems. What is that system? An international day of rest, about 53 days per year, plus approximately 15 holidays. As Pope Francis is pushing the Sunday Sabbath ecological conversion, so Dr. Smaja declares that his system would help to achieve the goal from the Paris Climate Conference. Every single reason possible is going to be used to push for the Sunday Sabbath so as to sweep every single individual into the obedience of this law. Those unconverted by the reasons will be forced by law. 
The only class of people who will not obey are those who obey the word of God, the Bible, as the sole authority for faith. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Do not be deceived. Satan will use digital or technological reasons, work-related reasons, family relations, moral reasons, climate reasons, economic reasons, and even spiritual reasons. He will use false doctrines, traditions of the past. He will point to the history when Christian churches began to stray from the Bible truths. He will use the appearances of demonic spirits masquerading as departed loved ones, and even the appearance of Satan himself pretending to be Jesus Christ. There will be an all-out warfare to see if you will obey the Bible, and the Bible only, or choose to accept the mark of the beast. At this point, the warfare has not reached its crowning point. However, it is indeed getting there. We can see all the reasons being formulated. But as of now, the majority of people have not been given sufficient reasons to keep Sunday. That is why you will see that even after what Poland has done, the economic, familial, and even a little bit of spiritual reasons, even they are having trouble in this Catholic country keeping these Sunday laws. These are not the Sunday law, but these are indeed blue laws to phase out Sunday shopping. And an article published on February 5th, 2019 by Konrad Krasuski and Darota Bartizel entitled Poland to review ban on Sunday shopping as elections draw near, they state that the law generally hurt retailers and shop owners while boosting some e-commerce stores. In a January survey, they found that 46% of Poles want to lift the ban, up from 37% last year. And so as Poland is beginning to find out, and even as Hungary itself found out, who repealed their Sunday laws, there needs to be more of a drive to keep Sunday holy. And so catastrophic climate change is soon to be used on a much larger scale to be pointed out as the judgments falling upon the earth as a sign of God's displeasure that his people are not keeping Sunday holy. Published on December 3rd, 2017, Bishop Sebastian Francis writes in his Advent Pastoral Letter that the world is in a global climate emergency, that all life on Earth is being threatened. He cites 2016, the hottest year on record, heat waves, loss of sea life, less crop yields, melting ice caps, and higher sea levels. He claims that 2012, the great climate emergency took 400,000 lives, and that from 2008, 21.5 million people were displaced. And what do you suppose his solution was? He says, Our Pope calls us to an ecological conversion. This idea, Sunday laws through climate change, will gain national support in America. It will be bipartisan. The official Sunday laws 
will start in America and spread throughout the rest of the world. Lehman Stone published an article on Vox on October 2, 2018 entitled, Why We Need Blue Laws, The Religious Tradition That Sanctifies Life Outside of Work. He states that while he was not aware of a specific law that led to the closing of restaurants in Arkansas, the cultural tradition of blue laws was strong enough that those stores remained closed. This phrase, cultural tradition, is one of massive importance. It is a tradition. And it is this tradition, not founded upon the Bible, which was embedded into the culture, changed the behavior of the restaurants, just as Pope Francis and Charles Camacy have stated. Lehman argues that progressives and religious conservatives alike should unite to push for more blue laws that protect the sanctity of life outside of work. Well, Isaiah chapter 8 verse 12 says, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. If conservatives and progressives unite, it would lead to what Lehman said and what economic historians would call a moral economy. He states that secularly minded people may celebrate the end of blue laws, but the result of the blue laws repeal may be distinctly non-progressive. The Supreme Court has repeatedly and fairly recently ruled blue laws are constitutional. Conservatives and progressives have already found common ground on this issue. Labor unions have historically supported blue laws. Blue laws are also said to protect huge swaths of the working class service sector employees, who in today's world often do not have access to union representation from arbitrary scheduling in seven-day work weeks. Blue laws must also be given for the same exact 24 hours across society, and not a random 24-hour period so that people may exercise their right to assemble in both religious and secular fashions. Do you remember how I said to keep in the back of your mind that the bill banning Sunday shopping that was enforced by Poland was originally proposed by labor unions? This is why. Both conservatives and progressives in America already have some common ground on this issue. And soon, when looking at climate change, they will have even more bipartisan reasons to work together to enforce Sunday laws. Thus, their case for Sunday laws, the law of the Pope, is laid out. And making Sunday laws the savior of the world, they will claim to be able to avoid the destruction of humanity and planet Earth on every level. And thus it has been proved Bible students of prophecy were right all along. This prophecy publicly began being proclaimed over 100 years ago. If it is false, why are they doing exactly as the Bible said they would? Dear viewer, the real savior of the world is Jesus Christ. Only he died to save us from our sins. Only he is able to give us the victory over death and over sin itself. Since sin is the transgression or the breaking of the law, which is the Ten Commandments, then Jesus can give us the ability to keep the Ten Commandments of God, including the Seventh Day Sabbath, the Biblical Sabbath. Faith keeps the law of God. If we believe that we are righteous by faith in Christ, then we will behave righteously as Christ behaved. If we believe that we can do all things through Christ, and that he gives us strength to live just like him, then through that faith we will keep the law. If we believe that Christ makes us partakers of the divine nature to overcome this sinful nature, then we will show that by our works, not just in giving to the poor, but in keeping the Sabbath and in all commandments of the Lord thy God. Only the people who have faith in Jesus have the ability to do this, and they absolutely will live out their faith before the masses, and only they will escape this world of corruption and make it to the heavenly paradise. Thank you for watching. God bless.
Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth of the times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God.